Uh-huh. I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, you are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only. Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Okay, I got something for you today. Um, I, I'm going to have a conversation this morning about my understanding of grace. Now that I've gotten older and I've come into a better understanding of a lot of things I didn't know about when I was younger, this is just my interpretation of grace. Now, once again, y'all, listen to me. I I ain't nobody's pastor. I ain't nobody's minister. So, you know, I'm pretty sure you can go to church and get a far more extensive definition of one I'm giving you. I'm just talking to people. You know, grace is this thing that, that God provides for us. And grace is just things that you get that's really undeserving. You know, I mean, I, I look at my life as it is today. You know, look, I work hard and I have faith in God. That I do. So things are going to happen in my life. But the way my life is now, I don't, I don't, I don't deserve all of this. I don't, I, don't, I don't look at it that way. I have been the beneficiary of God's grace. I have aligned myself in a position to accept whatever grace God has for me. And it will be far abundant and exceedingly in anything you could think of. His grace supersedes anything you could possibly imagine. You know, the goals that I set and the aspirations that I shoot for and the things that I have on my dream board, I have the faith that God will give it to me. But what he does with grace, he gives you far more than that. He gives you what he has for you, not what you can see. You can't see all he has for you. It's impossible. Who are you? How can you possibly imagine what he can imagine? How can you possibly think how he can think? How, how can you possibly do what he can do? How can it be? There isn't a single mind living or a collection of minds that could have thought of earth. What in your wildest imagination could have made you think of earth, the stars, the heavens, the oceans, the, 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 the galaxy, the, the constellations? What in your mind? What in any man's mind? We can point at it and analyze it, but we sure couldn't have thought of it. So come on now. I'm talking about lining yourself up with God's grace, which he will give to you if, if, you, if you want some of it now. But now here's the thing about grace. It can't be bought. If it, could, if it could be bought, I'm telling you, I would pour all the money I have and dump it into grace. Because after discovering what it is, it's this goodness that God shines on you simply as a reward of some type for his love for you. And for you attempting, for you attempting to do right. Not because you get it right. Because if he judged us purely on how we are, the right and wrong of it, we would all be doomed. All of us. Every last one of us would be doomed because we all fall short. We all make mistakes. We all sin. We all get it wrong from time to time. Nobody's perfect, man. Now I understand what my mother was saying about cleaning the house. All I want is a little more grace. All I need is a little more grace. When the last time you asked God for some grace? Now I'm not talking to you like I know everything. If you just benefit from his grace, which you already have, but if you're not aware of it, you don't know what's going on. Become aware of grace. Get aware of the fact that God does things for you simply because he loves you. He does things for you that you don't even deserve. Somehow you just wonder how you just got over. When you didn't even do the things to get over. You, sometimes you don't even know how you got that job you got when you ain't even really do the things to get your job. How you end up where you are? All the education you thought you went and got and had. How you end up where you are today? In a much better position than your education could have ever gotten you. That's, that's grace. How I get every place I am today. I didn't plan this, man. If I could have planned my life the way it is, don't you know I'd have done it when I was living in that car? If I knew how to do it, no, I benefited from his grace. I'm just a beneficiary of his grace, 
of his goodness and his mercy. God's goodness is better than your goodness. God's goodness is better than your mother's goodness. It's better than your wife's or your husband or your boo's goodness. God's goodness is different. His goodness, man, covers some stuff you can't even imagine. So why are you trying to put your life together? When the last time you asked him for just a little bit of grace? When have you thought of your life in terms of the grace that it has already benefited from? Have you ever done that? Man, just thought about, you know, you hear songs like, my soul look back and wonder how I got over. That was grace. That's all I can call it. Now, like I said, you can go to church or somewhere if you want to, and ministers that went to school to, to teach this thing way better than me. I'm just giving you from a layman standpoint, man. Have you thought about his grace? Would you not be well to be a beneficiary of his grace? Would it not? Ser- now, check this out. The better you try to do, the more grace he'll give to you. And that grace can't be bought. Like I said, it's free. You can't purchase grace. But the better you try to become, the more, the more grace he gets to put your way. So, man, just try. Why don't you just try to do better? Look, man, quit talking about it. I'm going to start next week. I'm going to start at the new year. No, you're not. You do that every year. You know, just every, At the new year, I'm going to eat better. At the new year, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on and get in here. In the new year, well, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it now, man. You, you, you're going to do it now. Stop trying. Do, do it. Stop talking about it. Do it now. The best way to benefit from his grace is start in action now. N-O-W. Now, right now, today, what you waiting on? All you doing is delaying his opportunity to bless you. You know, man, you know, do you know how many times we do that? We delay his opportunity to bless us by not starting now. If you're going to get healthy, why don't you start now? Now, you're going to trip a little bit because the holiday's coming, but you ain't got to eat bad all the time. You could start eating correct today. You could. You could, and then guess what? That could be some grace on the end of that. I'm just giving you a, a little cheap analogy. But do you feel what I'm saying to you? Start thinking in terms of grace, what he has done for you and provided for you that you ain't even see coming. That, that You know, you keep calling them blessings, and I got that. A lot of it, and that's all it is. But, man, have you thought about the stuff that didn't happen to you you can't account for? You, I, I, For me, that's been grace. And I'm a beneficiary of it. And that's available to everybody that wants some. So next time you're talking to him, just check in with Grace. See what that is. That's that's better than money. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Lean on me mm-hmm. when you're not strong. And I'll be your I'll help you carry on low. Boy, that was my jam. And learned how to play it on the piano. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's how I felt this morning. <laughs> Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Steve Harvey Morning Show, full of friends carrying on. Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica, the mouth of the South, Junior Boy, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please. Back from out the dawn, out of nowhere, missing in action, MIA, <laughs> Wounded Warrior Foundation, all of that. King of pranks. Ladies and gentlemen, ready for love. Where's his ass been? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> now, <laughs> the few coming. <laughs> top, top. Yeah. top, 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 top. Yeah. Top, top. Oh, my God. Yeah, top, Welcome top. Back. Welcome, Welcome back. Welcome back. Top. My man. How y'all doing? Y'all good? Good. How are you? Good. How, yeah. <laughs> Where have you been? Oh. All of that. We have questions, okay? Oh, we have questions. Because oh, 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 hey. your I supervisor. Got I got a supervisor. supervisor. Yeah. First of all, uh-huh. I ain't know nothing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, then yeah. I got bought along into it. 
Mm-hmm. Late <laughs> as usual. Mm-hmm. Then I got drug into it. Mm-hmm. Then when I found out, I damn. Mm. Then I had to retract <laughs> several statements I had made about your ass. <laughs> yes, <girl. you> did. <laughs> Always <laughs> talking about somebody. had to retract. <laughs> oh, I was yes, lacing you, you up like sneakers. <laughs> mm. I said this yeah, a lot. Steve, you can't say that. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Don't then say I that, Steve. Then I found out what happened. I got a call from some family members. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why is you talking about Tommy like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, my response was, don't I always? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then they respond, well, you ain't heard? Then my mm. response was, heard what? <laughs> And then they come talking about then this one I knew it wasn't gonna be good. Oh Lord! <laughs> <laughs> well, you know you know you you know man when you talking to old people and you hear that, I said mm. well, you, you ain't heard. <laughs> no, I ain't heard nothing. Oh Lord! Oh Lord! <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna have somebody call you. What? <laughs> you you talking to me right now? Uh uh-uh. uh. It ain't my place. Right. <laughs> and then I went. I went. What the hell? And now I'm sitting up in here. I call him, his ass ain't answering. And I'm sitting there going, what the hell you mean it ain't? It was All your right, place well, to tell him, why is you talking about that? Ladies and gentlemen, we come back. Yes, thank yeah. you. Nephew Tommy, yes. full explanation. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Gather your mom and them around the radio. It's about to go down. Steve Harvey Morning Show, right after this, Nephew Tommy. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, we are back. Um, if you're just joining us, nephew Tommy is back, and we're gonna yeah. find out where he's been. We're so happy that you're now, back, Tommy. We didn't let know. Let me just say this here. Oh, uh, I found out two days after what had happened, and Tommy's been out now. How long, lady? Uh, maybe over a, a month. month. Month a month, and a month. That yeah, month at least and a, a month. Half or yeah, something. he been out a month, and we ain't had a lot of people. Where's Tommy? What? Yeah, what he yeah. did now? Well, <laughs> I know I had he to does have a, a reputation. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, nephew Tommy. Man, how do I even start? Um, Thanking God. Yeah, that's first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Mm. Come on. All right, so. Let me see if I can paint the picture for you. I, everybody knows I'm a, I'm a guy that likes to work out all the time, try to keep myself in shape. So my trainer actually got me a, uh, a stretcher who stretches you once a week. So this guy was stretching me and found a lump on my neck. And uh, he had to push way down. He said, man, you got a lump on your neck. You might want to get that checked out. I said, all right, cool. So I go get it checked out, go to my primary doctor. And uh, she says, I don't know, but let's be safe. He sends me to a ear, nose, and throat doctor. Ear, nose, and throat doctor drains it and says, I think that's a cyst. So he drains it. He says, bud, let's be safe. And he uh, he sends me to another doctor. They get a biopsy. He said, we're going to take some cells and see what we get. I don't get a call back, so I'm in Miami shooting ready to love. It's May 18th. My, my, my wife is there with me. We're having a good time. Doctor calls and says, you have thyroid cancer. And I'm just on the set, man. I can't believe. If my wife wouldn't have been with me that day, I don't think I would have made it through. Mm. So I have been diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Got my surgery done August the 24th. They completely got every bit of this cancer out of me. Uh, While they were in there, Mm -hmm. removing my thyroid, they found more cancer in my esophagus and cleaned all that out. So I told my wife when I closed my eyes, I said, I just want to wake up and I just want to see you looking at me. That's all I want. I woke up, wife was looking dead at me. She said, you good boy. You made it through. Every little bit of it is gone, all of it. You are cancer free. You don't need no chemotherapy, none of that. You good. But I don't know that they had to go through my esophagus. She said, but then she said, but. I said, what is the but? She said, you have a trach in your, in your in your throat, and it's going to have to be there for a minute. So I had to have that for about three weeks. And uh, I am, at this point, cancer-free. I am, you know, my voice has been through a struggle, so now it's slowly coming back. But uh, by the grace of God, man, 
I'm still here. I'm blessed. Um, I think this is probably one of the, this is the biggest task I've ever had in my life ever. And uh, I'm grateful for, for you guys, the radio family, uh, praying for me, just being able to have a job like this that allow me to go do something like that. And, and you got my back, man, so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Um, it's amazing when God puts you in time out and tell you you got to wait for a minute and put you on mute. And um, I've been on mute for about a month. And I'm slowly coming back. So um, I don't know any other way to tell you, man. <laughs> I just hear Steve say it all the time that God is in the blessing business. <laughs> and uh, okay. okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's okay. Is. It's okay. Prayer We're so glad you're, you're back. Yes, you are here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> Okay. Well, we're so, so happy each day, to be back, Tommy. My voice yes, is getting are. strong each day, so it's just mm-hmm. it's just a matter of time before yeah. before I get back to cussing and clowning you know? <laughs> and pranking folks yeah. and all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you but haven't you know. changed, but yeah, <laughs> you know, and he may not have been able to talk to us, but you were texting <laughs> like yeah. crazy. Yeah. Oh, man. And I have noticed us. that you haven't cussed since you've been back. <laughs> nah, no, no, me a little bit. I know you probably don't want to waste none of your voice on some ignorant words, but <laughs> looking forward to the day where you full blast and back uh-huh. to cussing. That's crazy, man. Cause like, you know, man, you don't, you don't ever know what's going on with people around you. You know what I'm yes. saying? You know, you uh-huh. could be just going along, yeah. whistling along, and then this thing called life come up, man, and uh, mm-hmm. it's just like you know. Glad you're back, man, because, mm-hmm. like, uh, it ain't the same when you ain't here, you know. Right. right uh, you wasn't here then. Junior missed a week because Junior went off. And, uh, <laughs> you want to tell Tommy? <laughs> you, you, yeah. just, you, just, you just lead. Uh, just people just come up missing. You just be leading people that just come up missing. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, you normally know when you come up missing, I, I see, I base it on track record. <laughs> so I already knew wasn't nothing wrong, but then yeah. something really was wrong. Cause I went, uh, uh-uh. I ain't finna, I ain't finna be mourning and all this. Ain't nothing wrong. And then I mm-hmm. found out something really was wrong. And then while you was gone, Junior went away for a week. Didn't tell nobody nothing. Just yeah. gone for a week. Then his little ass mm-hmm. came back. Tommy, he married now. <laughs> <laughs> oh snap! This little fool this show went off. Here. He went off and got married. So now all the all oh, the man. comedians is gone. Tommy, I was here by myself. <laughs> so I just had to just, man, I was just doing what I wanted to do. You know, junior yeah. ass man wasn't doing sports or nothing, you know. Yeah. He and needed also, marital uh, advice. I yeah, so now that. all of his, junior, what's on your mind? Yeah. We all, all every morning it's been that. <laughs> so to have you back, man, is a joy. Yeah. We're going to talk about it a little bit more this morning because your story can be inspirational yeah. and yeah. help a lot of people. And I think mm-hmm. it's yes, a story sir. that needs yes, fair sir. repeating and told because mm-hmm. God is in the blessing business. Yes, he Cause, is. Because, you know, man, you, a lot of people get that diagnosis and you, and you and, and they ain't here no more. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Hello. That's how good God is. Yeah. Amen. Amen again. Yes, All right. Sir. Yes, yes. Tommy is back. My man. Uh, and we'll be back with the CLO, as Tommy calls him, the CLO, the Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Matt Barnes retracts his support for Emi Aduka, uh in his big cheating scandal and suspension at Celtics coach. Also, Duca's fiance, Nia Long, broke her silence. We'll talk about that. And Academics calls uh, hip-hop legends Dusty uh, and LL claps back. Yes, I bet he, he does. did. The legend, yes, he I bet does. he did. Yep. The GOAT, what? yep. <laughs> The LL, the legend, is not Dusty, so he had yeah. to make sure that yeah, he had to make mm-hmm. sure yeah. there was clarity that. on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> we will coming up at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time for you, Steve. People want to ask you questions, CLO. Here we go. Cheyenne and Raleigh writes: For my thirtieth birthday, I invited my cousin to come to visit. 
She brought her boyfriend and she had just met him a week before she came. So I told her that he couldn't stay in my house. She got mad and drove back home. Was I wrong for this? No. No. Absolutely not. It's your house. She don't even know him. You don't know him. And she just told me he's staying at your she's staying at your house. That's not how it works, man. No, man, Pe- fam. People don't even <laughs> understand order and and, and 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 just being civil towards one another. You bring a stranger to your cousin's house, talking about he's staying here with me. I just met him last week. Huh. Nobody waking up, standing nobody with no, over their bed with no axe in their hand. <laughs> <laughs> what? Talking about hi. You know y'all ain't going out of here no more, don't you? <laughs> Now, come on, put this duct tape on your arm's mouth. Shut up crying now. You know you don't know me. Man, nobody finna do that. <laughs> no, that's craziness, really. All right. Um, Sammy in Tribeca says, I'm a 39-year-old married man, and I have to share my wife with her male best friend, which is very annoying. His husband is just as irritated as I am with their friendship, and um, I had plans to see a movie, and she'd already seen it on her lunch break with her bestie. How do I set boundaries without offending them? Okay, excuse me. Uh, Did I miss all right. something? It's a married couple. man, married man, his uh-huh. wife has a best friend who's also married to a man. It's a gay yeah. couple, okay? <clears throat> the, the I husband, don't give a damn. Yeah, the husband is irritated because the wife spends more time with the bestie, with her best yeah. friend. I don't give a damn if he married to several men. That ain't none of my business. You can do what you want right. to do. Right. But do you spend so much time with him mm-hmm. over me? Your husband. Yeah. I don't think, you know, man, y'all find something else to do. He got so, a husband. Go to movie with him. You got a husband. Go to movie with your husband. It don't mm-hmm. make no sense, man. I keep him, man. Okay. So, yeah, you're, you keep saying. Shows. Male and female. These opposite yeah. sex friendships lead to problems. That's mm-hmm. your bestie. Man, mm-hmm. get another bestie. Where so, your girls at? So the question is, he wants to know, Steve, how does he set boundaries? He He's worried about offending them. How do I set boundaries oh, without offending offending? Them. Yeah. Well, I don't give a damn how know who offended. <laughs> exactly. I'm offended. I'm offended. No, 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 no. <laughs> i tell you what we're going to do. All of us finna be offended. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Uh, there you go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat that of, that offensive thing going to finna be like peanut butter. I'm going to finna get some on everybody's bread. <laughs> Spread it around. <laughs> you know. When I make my peanut butter sandwich, I put the peanut butter all all the way to the edge. Uh-huh. You can't uh-huh. see no bread on my sandwich. <laughs> I spread my peanut butter. Now, I don't get the jelly all the uh-huh. way to the edge because I don't want it leaking out, but that peanut butter thick. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm spreading That's this right. offensive. He don't want to offend nobody. Man, please. <laughs> offend. Yeah. Yeah, he's. Yeah. All right. Moving on to Joanne in Indiana. Joanne writes, my husband was ill for three years before he died. Um, Before he died, I started dating someone else. My marriage had been over for, for, for years, but I stayed with my husband because he was sick. My boyfriend moved in two weeks after my husband died. His mom thinks I'm... I'm dead wrong. Do I owe her an explanation? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't a good look. <laughs> right, two weeks? I'm Come just on. telling you right now. <laughs> now, I know the man was probably sick, sick, mm-hmm. incapacitated or something. Mm-hmm. And you should have gave it a little more time because of the way it looked. But <sighs> two weeks after he moved in? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> hey, hey uh, what was all the neighbors saying? Uh, what the they ain't neighbors... even lowered the casket in the ground yet. They ain't even put all the dirt on it. Right. It still got that green astroturf around it. <laughs> <laughs> and all the right neighbors after going, the well. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Here's the key word. He isn't even cold yet. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. Well, yeah. that's where people wrong at, yeah, though. Oh, yeah. he ice cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all can quit saying that. He, the body ain't even cold. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah matter of fact, when you die, you cold that first morning. 
Oh, Frozen. goodness. Yeah. 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 yeah, they pick you up by your finger. <laughs> Does she owe the mom an explanation? Whose her, mother? Her, His mother. His mother. Does she owe her an explanation? Oh, she Hell yeah. Uh-huh. What should she I say? I mean, his mama tripping like, what? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two because weeks after my son? She already know this was going on while he was sick. Mm-hmm. But nobody understands that about life. Mm-hmm. So you just got to tell a mom, look, you might, you might, but no matter what you say, how you think it's going to go over? With his mother. <laughs> no. She done lost she her son. Eight months you, at least, huh? Yeah, a year. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to hate you forever. No. Mm-hmm. Why don't you move in with him? There you go. He ain't got nothing. Now he all up in her son house. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Girl, yeah. you finna be involved in drive by. I be. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! No. Say yeah. anything, everything you want to say. Yeah, yeah say that's it. when they start firing shots up in the house. <laughs> I, if I was him, I'd move back to oh, my house. Yeah, yeah. I have to let some time cool. That ain't yeah. gone. Yeah. 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 Every time they pull out the driveway, go to church or shopping, cheater. <laughs> She's going to hate her forever. All right, moving on. Last one. Cammy in Toronto says, I'm a beginning swimmer and my boyfriend is a professional diver. I learned to swim, but I hate being in water. We're going on vacation. He's planned water activities for us. He's forcing me to face my fears. Should I make my own plans? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you're going to die on this vacation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he sound like he finna have to save your ass. That's what he yeah. sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> all, all these damn water sports. <laughs> what is he doing, though? Man, I love going on the water. Uh-huh. In all the water trips I done took, I done jet skied three times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Last time I just went, circled the boat, came right on back. Yeah. <laughs> we saw it on you. Yeah. yeah. On <laughs> we that did. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, CLO. We got to wrap this up. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Boston Celtics coach Ime Aduka has been suspended for the 2022 23 season for violating team policy, which reportedly was due to an inappropriate and consensual relationship with a female member of the Celtic staff. Late last week, XBN, XB, ex-NBA star player and commentator Matt Barnes uh, posted a video of himself talking about Uduko's suspension, and he said it was a terrible decision for him to be suspended. Um, he has since posted another video retracting his support for Uduka, and he explains why. Take a listen. And I clearly have to say, last night, uh, without knowing all the facts, I spoke on Ime Udoka's defense. And after finding out the facts after I spoke, I erased what I posted because this situation in Boston is deep, it's messy, it's a hundred times uglier than any of us thought. And that's why I erased what I said. Uh, some things happened that I can't condone, I can't back, and it's not my place to tell you what happened. If it ends up coming out, it ends up coming out. But that was the reason why I raced in my post last night, because after I posted it, I got a call from someone who had all the details, and it was deep. So, man, praying for everybody involved. Um, you know, hope everyone gets through this. If he retracted, it's major. This the same person rode from Frisco to L.A. and whooped Derek Fisher ass. This the same yeah. dude. The same one. Thank the same you, one. Yes. And so, see, I was there, having, see, see, I was having problems with where his level of forgiveness didn't went off. Yeah. Now, I can't forgive. I'm, I'll be going, wait a minute, man. Because your whole see, marriage played out in the NBA. Yeah. We but, saw all yes. yeah. see, The whole yeah. thing of it is, man, it's just, it's sad it's because of the sad. internet now that mm-hmm. all these problems have to get aired out. All dirty laundry is now aired out publicly. No more secrets. And it, and it don't yeah. give you a chance to rest nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's the sad part of all of this. Yeah. But what, however mm-hmm. ugly and whatever information you found out, can I tell you something? Well, it ain't nothing new. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This, yeah. whatever. before is what you're saying. 
Because let me explain. Whatever it is, there are no allegations right now mm-hmm. of any inappropriate uh, sexual advances. Right. You know, oh, very. And so, you know, I don't really know all the facts. I just, I just watch how people are so ready to jump on the and beat him you. up bandwagon mm-hmm. and let's cancel him and get him yeah. to lose his job. Because he did something a whole lot of humans do. Mm-hmm. Hey, Steve, let me ask you this, and, and the guys, uh, Junior, Tommy. what is he a great coach? Is he a oh, good yeah. coach? That's yeah. what I want to know. Yeah, a great coach. Yeah. yeah, I know they want to. Yeah, I remember Nia being Her in the team, you know, being there, yeah. cheering hey, him hey, on, hey. all of that. Man. Mm. He's yeah. just not a good cheater. He just didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. Coaching ain't his problem. That's what we miss. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that different Excellent, perspective. <laughs> See, it's Welcome level. back, nephew. Welcome what back. you do. Mm. I'll give you another example. Okay. Uh-huh. Deshaun Watson can mm. get all the massages he wants. Mm. Right. He just got to stop turning over. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> all his trouble starts when he flips over. When he flips over. <laughs> See, stay on your stomach. Get your uh, damn massage. Quit turning over, Deshaun. <laughs> now, the coach of the Celtics, leave. to answer uh, your question, Shirley, is a great yeah. coach. He, okay. got, he got he got a very young team to the NBA Finals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and they love mm-hmm. him. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Call it right. for Because he's out. I, well, my question is, have you been hearing, uh, like I saw Stephen A. Smith talk about this on ESPN, oh, yeah. the fact that he, because he is African-American, we know that there are things that go on the NBA, NFL, all types of leagues, behavior of coaches, of players, but the fact that we know about this, did the Celtics organization leak this out and now this man is being dragged and, like you, you want, said, the court of public opinion and This is a theory that else. I have about it. I don't think that the Celtics basketball organization would want this out. I think because of the Me Too movement and women's rights now, I think when that affair got out in the office Mm -hmm. and people found out, I think there was an uproar within the organization involving people who had nothing to do with the affair, accusing him because he was in a head coach position and this girl was in a subservient position that he should not have done that. Now, and morally, he was mm-hmm. wrong, but legally, what did he do? And when you get people coming out because they don't, you but, can't do that to her and all this here, and the woman ain't said nothing. Is it? Is it just one lady? There's so many different rumors about who it is, the women, yeah, I, the women I just, that yeah. work for the Celtics organization. Right. I, I, I just, I smell a white woman, Carl. Carl I just, I don't know why. I just feel <laughs> like on, a boy. white woman. But Come wait on, a minute. And Make the fact up we got to. your lost time. <laughs> we got to say <laughs> this, though. Back in and here the fact and that say it. it. And the fact that it was on our girl. He cheated on our girl, Nia Long. Now, we love Nia Long. She's our queen, and we, we mad she, about that. We love Nia Long. We're mad for her. We're mad with her. We stand with her. We love us some Nia Long. Yeah, and she's thanking Period. everyone for their support. Yeah, for their support and everything. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they share a sun together. I'm telling you. <laughs> they share a sun lady. together, all of that. Mm. All right. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have some music news with our girl Carla right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so we've been talking about this whole uh, Boston Celtics coach, Emi Aduka, and uh, his cheating on Nia Long and all of that. And, um, you know, the circumstances, we don't know much about it, but um, we do know that we love us and Nia Long. We do know that. Nia, uh, Nia Long and Emi Aduka have been engaged since 2015. She broke her silence about the alleged affair in an interview with People Magazine saying... Quote, the outpouring of love and support from family, friends, and the community during this difficult time means so much to me. I ask that my privacy be respected as I process the recent events. Above all, I am a mother and will continue to focus on my children. The couple share a son together, and Nia has an older son from a previous relationship. 
sources close to the Celtics told TMZ Sports that Nia had just permanently moved to Boston two weeks ago and that she and Uduka were house hunting. Right. So this is just a mess. It just really is. I mean, well, then, but it's, go ahead, it, I was just saying, then there's a rumor on TMZ saying the woman that helped coordinate that travel the is, travel coordinator. is mm-hmm. part of this scandal. She could be the woman. So it makes it even more like what kind of yeah. mess? <laughs> Because she scheduled this. Nia's travel too. Yeah. 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 So we don't know if that's true. Like well, we that said. way you know where everybody at. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Dirty. Dirty. Dirty, dog. But you know what, though? See, it's like this. First of all, this shouldn't even be a news story. There have been no criminal charges pressed, mm-hmm. there have been no criminal accusations. So now what we are just been privy to. Is we off into some, we are privy to some people's personal lives. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There have been stories of infidelity everywhere. Yeah. And yeah. people work through it and, and keep their life back in check. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know this man at all, except I'm a fan of his on the basketball court. And I mm-hmm. saw Nia at the game, and I've always been a fan man. of Nia. I've been right And yes. so, you know, I was Nia just long. like, wow, pulling for him. Mm-hmm. And then the question became, they've been engaged since 2015. Why are they not married yet? Because things are not in order anymore. Don't People don't live their lives in no order no more. Should you get married becomes subjective. It's not, there's no order to this anymore. So I wish they could get a chance to work it out because it don't have to be relationship. And then some people say it is. They're like, oh, women go, if you cheat on me, I'm out. Mm-hmm. But They say well, it every they, day. They, did they find a house? At least they have somewhere to stay while all this going. While they work it out. Don't nobody yeah. want to stay in Boston <laughs> right now, Tommy? <laughs> With all this? I had, I had to Tommy's wait. back. Tommy's back, I mean, everybody. We need somewhere to stay. We got to, I mean, we're going to go through something. Let's go through that. something in a nice house. Tommy talking all go that talk noise. To if this was Halle Berry, Tommy be right there with me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. uh-huh. We're going to go Man. talk to Jesus, and we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is fall now, and uh, Sister Hotel dropped by. Um, well, as you can hear, Jesus. You know, good morning, everyone. I'm not going to take up a lot of time uh, doing the praise and worship service. I just want to. Do the, I'm, I'm, when I come on the radio, I had to be more business, I've been told. You know, oh, just get okay. to the, uh, what you call it, segments. So, you oh, know, oh, let's do the okay. segments. Hey, one. Carly Shirley, uh, Mississippi Junior. Man, hey, boy, you back. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I ma'am. heard you was not doing well. Look at God. Yes, he's amazing. Healed your body. You came so free? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I am. Oh, ha! <laughs> that ain't nothing but the Lord. That's all it is. Because, you know, eight of my husbands has passed from cancer. Oh, oh okay. Hey. I didn't well, they didn't. That all of them, didn't, they had it. They didn't all die from it. Two of them was in <laughs> car accidents. I choked one of them. This is where you're going? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, they had all of them. Didn't die. <laughs> well, I choked him while he had cancer. And then I just no. called the paramedic when they came to the house. He passed in his sleep. <laughs> okay, oh, well, my God. Can we get to why you're here? Sister Odell, I don't know what it, what is we here for. <laughs> well, we wanted to ask you a question. You know the mm. saying, um, uh, no white before Memorial Day, no white after Labor Day. So... Think, seeing as how you're a mother of the church and you wear white all the time, uh-huh. uh, was, yeah, does this put you in a dilemma? Uh, will you put never your hands, white dress never will? Yeah, white, oh. white, 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 white. <laughs> you, I'm a missionary. Ray, huh? You and Lisa that's Ray. the color. I'm a missionary. Uh-huh. You ain't saying nothing to that girl, Lisa Ray. What are you over here for? <laughs> Do it. Do it. Yeah. Lisa Ray ain't in no church. No, oh, well, we don't know oh, that. Man. I'll tell you what. Well, if she do come, she's going to be seating people. Uh, why do you think she's going to be an usher? Yeah, actually, that's, if you wear it on the first, because that's how our colors on the first, because, you know, I'm on the missionary board and the usher board. Yes, oh, ma'am. Okay. And okay. first Sunday, we wear white. Everybody. Okay. Mm-hmm. Call well, it a um, white out. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to, to uh, be clear on that. The other thing is, do you have any advice for uh, Nia Long? You know, um, well, her- you know, I feel sorry for she's such a pretty girl and young and everything. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you can work through a husband that has a, a, a moment's infidelity. Mm-hmm. You know? Fidelity. Uh-huh. That's what I say. What do you call it? Okay. <laughs> just let them make it. But what, what do you mean, Sister Odell? Well, you know, if you just let people work through it themselves, they can work on. You know, I had several husbands that was that had done some things outside of our relationship. Oh. I had you handle it. I didn't you know do? that. Well, I kicked the girl ass. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. See, that'll make you feel better. At least if, if, if Nina going up there and kick her ass, she'll feel a whole lot better about it then. And then threaten him. I'm going to kick our ass and go over there again and see what happened to you. Mm-hmm. Now I need all that money bought in here for me and these kids. Yeah, and yeah. now you, shut up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he ain't allowed to talk at the house for two years. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, <laughs> you get years? to go where you want to go. <laughs> you know, and you got so you can get some things you had never got before. They still love each other. He just made a mistake. He's a man, you know. He made a mistake, but you're in this fast world now. You know, women's cheat. Everybody mad at him. That girl ain't lose her job, did she? Uh, Nothing we, we know of. We well, know. Uh, we she know. probably still buying tickets and placing people. Mm-hmm. Oh. But you sitting oh, up okay. here in the right. Okadabo, he that's ain't got the heat working oh, nowhere. Oh, Okadabo. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's Amy Uduka. <laughs> Okadabo, the, the main the coach. The, yeah, Amy yeah. Uduka, uh-huh. <laughs> e- Emi Aduka. Yeah, that's his name. That's, that's his, his name. name. Oh, I knew his. Oh, I that Emi Adu- I knew his grandfather. Oh, oh did you? His, oh, did what you was his name? name? Big Daddy, do that there. How <laughs> <laughs> you do that there? Hey. Then that's Big Daddy, do that there. Then his daddy's uh-huh. name was Looker here, and then they named uh, his son right there. There he go there. <laughs> All right. Lonely Thank you, Mr. Odell. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up. Lonely, lonely, hallelujah. In just a minute, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you're just joining us, nephew Tommy is back, and we're going to yeah. find out where he's been. We're so happy that you're now, back, Tommy. We didn't let know. Let me just say this here. Oh. Uh, I found out two days after what had happened. And mm-hmm. Tommy's been out now. How long, ladies? Uh, uh, maybe over a, a month. A month, a month, and, a month. Yeah, month at least and a, a month. month. Yeah. Yeah. He's been out a month and we had a lot of people. Where's Tommy? Where? Yeah. yeah. What he yeah. did now? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I know I had he to He does have a, a reputation. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, nephew Tommy. Man, how do I even start? Um, Thanking God. Yeah, that's first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Mm. Come on. All right, so uh, let me see if I can paint the picture for you. I, I, everybody knows I'm a I'm a guy that likes to work out all the time, try to keep myself in shape. So my trainer actually got me a uh, a stretcher, who stretches you once a week. So this guy was stretching me, and found a lump on my neck. And uh, he had to push way down. He said, man, you got a lump on your neck. You might want to get that checked out. I said, all right, cool. So I go get it checked out, go to my primary doctor. And uh, she says, I don't know, but let's be safe. She sends me to a ear, nose, and throat doctor. Ear, nose, and throat doctor drains it and says, I think that's a cyst. So he drains it. He says, but let's be safe. And he, uh, he sends me to another doctor. They get a biopsy. He said, we're going to take some cells and see what we get. I don't get a call back, so. I'm in Miami shooting Ready to Love. It's May 18th. My, my, my wife is there with me. We're having a good time. Doctor calls and says, you have thyroid cancer. And I'm just on the set, man. I can't believe. If my wife wouldn't have been with me that day, I don't think I would have made it through. So I have been diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Got my surgery done August the 24th. They completely got every bit of this cancer out of me. Uh, wow. While they were in there, mm-hmm. removing my thyroid, they found more cancer in my esophagus and cleaned all that out. So I told my wife when I closed my eyes, I said, I just want to wake up. I just want to see you looking at me. That's all I want. I woke up. Wife was looking dead at me. 
You say, you good, boy. You made it through. Every little bit of it is gone, all of it. You are cancer-free. You don't need no chemotherapy, none of that. You good. But I don't know that they had to go through my esophagus. She said, but then she said, but. I said, what is the but? She said, you have a trach in your, in your, in your throat, and it's going to have to be there for a minute. So I had to have that for about three weeks. And uh, I am at this point cancer free. I am, you know, my voice has been through a struggle. So now it's slowly coming back. But uh, by the grace of God, man, I'm still here. I'm blessed. Um, I think this is probably one of the, this is the biggest task I've ever had in my life ever. And uh, I'm grateful for, for you guys, the radio family, uh, praying for me, just being able to have a job like this that allowed me to go do something like that. And and you got my back, man, so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Um, it's amazing when God puts you in time out and tell you you got to wait for a minute and put you on mute. And um, I've been on mute for about a month. And I'm slowly coming back. So um, I don't know any other way to tell you, man. <laughs> I just hear Steve say it all the time, that God is in the blessing business. And uh, Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, It's okay. Is. It's okay. Prayer We're so glad healing. you're back. Yes. Well, hey, man, listen, bro. We sure glad you're back and everything, man. And I think mm-hmm. it's uh, I think you opening up and sharing your story with so many people, uh, first of all, it's a great testimony, you know. Um, yeah. Like yeah. I was saying to you before, man, a lot of times God uh, passes us through these tests for the right. testimony. And you got a mic, mm-hmm. man. And there are a lot of people that's getting this diagnosis. And there's a lot of people going to get this diagnosis. And everybody don't have to think it's the end. No. Because there yeah. millions of people survive this. So what, let me ask you a question, man. What's been your attitude about getting better? And what's been your attitude through the whole process is when you heard it? What was your attitude? I just, I just wasn't gonna give up. I just, I just, I just refused to give up. I just had the desire to, to beat it, to do whatever I gotta do. I mean, especially when you got, you know, I got a beautiful family, man, wife, kids. I got a lot to live for. I love my job. I love doing. What I do for a living, so I'm, I'm, uh, my whole mindset is, is, is I will, I will not let you defeat me. It wouldn't, I will not let it happen. So I just kept fighting every morning. Every morning I wake up, I'm just, I was in fight mode the whole time, right. and I, I'm, I'm still waking up every morning. Let me ask you this, man. Mode. Did, did the doctors say anything to you, or like, this is the mindset you have to have? Or did you just decide that yourself? Did you get anything from them along the mental requirements you, you, you to can, beat this? You can, you can, uh, you can talk to people from a mental perspective if you need to, but, but you know, man, I had my wife there, I had my mother there, I had some soldiers with me. I, I, you never know how big your village is until something happens to you, and uh, I, I was able to see how big my village was, how many people really had my back, and I, and I just. You know, I just I just felt my father coming up out of me like I'm not I'm not giving up. Wow. I got too much to live for. Hey, Tom, so, you, yes, sir. What you're saying is true. You don't know how big your village is to your hut on fire. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you find out I who like in the village. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Until your hut on fire, yeah. you have no idea. Who in the mm-hmm. village even care? Who coming with water? Mm-hmm. Who pulling mm-hmm. you out? Mm-hmm. Who coming in to get you? That's an amazing mm-hmm. statement. Yeah. And you know what, yeah. man? I, I I say this to you, Steve. It's it's not until something happens that you start to respect oh. the gift that God is giving you. You know Amen what I'm saying? Just just mm-hmm. the gift. I mean, the, these these two vocal cords I got mean the world to me. Hmm. And and this this just just that gift alone, man. And I think I think back in the past, how much how many times I've taken that gift for granted. How many times I just expected it to be there. Hey, Tommy, doing the man, whole time. How long were you silent, though? Man, I was silent 
probably a good three weeks to a month, just on straight silent. Wow. And 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 you know, man, to have to write down everything on the board and tell everybody what you want, what you're trying to do, mm-hmm. it's it's mm. uh, <laughs> that's a whole different world, man. Mm-hmm. Whole well, different well, world. Let me let's go back for a moment, Tommy. I want to ask you something. How did you? You didn't have any pain initially or anything. You knew nothing. I had, I, I had nothing. All I did was I was just trying to. Y'all know me. I'm always trying to lose weight before it's time to shoot the TV show. So mm-hmm. I had a guy stretching me. He just felt a, a, something way down in my neck while you stretch. He said, "Man, you got a little lump there." Yeah. I said, "Okay." Said he said, that. "He yeah. said mm-hmm. it might not be much, but uh-huh. you know, go get it checked out." I went and uh-huh. got it checked out. I. Yeah. I so one doctor started it from sending me this place, this place, that place. Mm-hmm. Finally, they they uh, did a biopsy, and when they called me, they said, "Hey, you you have thyroid cancer," and and I was just, I was devastated. But uh, yeah, immediately I, I got in pick me up mode. All right, let's let's not let's 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 get into the fight mode. Yeah, no so I will party. say this. No pity party. You God. Nah, no pity medicine. party, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm coming mm-hmm. back. Uh-huh. Uh, my voice is getting better each day. Mm-hmm. If you hear I'm coming to your city, you better get them tickets because I got a story to tell. <laughs> <They're> all <laughs> Yeah. In all right. joke format. <laughs> <laughs> all right, nephew. Glad you're back. Look at God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject is my wife's co-worker's feet. What? Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's strawberry letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, or more, please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com. All you have to do is click submit strawberry letter. We could be reading your letter. <laughs> Uh, live like we're going to do this one right here right now and you never know it could be yours nephew's back Ooh, buckle up and hold on tight we got it for you here it is strawberry letter <laughs> Ooh, and he sounds sexy you hear all that oh, you hear God, that right <laughs> oh please i know right like he don't want to hear that <laughs> Subject, my thank you, nephew. Welcome back again. Uh, my wife's co-worker's feet is the subject. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 55-year-old married man, and my wife and I work in the same building, but for different companies. I'm able to dress down for work, but my wife has to always dress up and be jazzy because she interacts with the public. Her office is full of dime pieces in their early 30s, and everything on these women is right where it needs to be, if you know what I mean. Me and my coworkers love to sit in the courtyard watching the women come and go. I started following one of the ladies on IG because she is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And on top of that, she smiles and makes eye contact with me whenever I see her. What I love most about her is her pretty feet. They're the sexiest part of her, and they have their own Instagram page. I secretly looked at her IG foot page for months until my wife saw me and took my phone. She kept my phone for two days, and I was a nervous wreck. When I got it back, I made a fake IG page so I can see pictures of my wife's co-worker's pretty feet without my wife knowing it. I thought I had outsmarted her this time, but... She caught me again. She went into my settings and found the fake IG account attached to my real account, and I was busted again. She saw all of the emojis and the comments that I left under her co-workers' pictures, and she started crying. She didn't react how I thought she would at all. She told me that my actions made her feel unpretty and undervalued. That broke my heart, and I cried too. How can I hurt my soulmate like this? I saw it as harmless entertainment, but now she's so hurt and broken because of me. How do I restore my wife's confidence in herself and in me? Okay, let me get this straight. You're about to ruin your marriage and all this is over some feet? (laughs) You've you've got to be kidding me. I mean, I, I know people have all kinds of fetishes and foot fetishes are big and people are really into feet. But to do what you did, this was just so stupid. I mean, 
Yeah, you say you like her feet, but admit it, you like her too, and you went too far. I mean, you're stalking her on Instagram and commenting and putting little emojis on her page. This woman, your colleague works, your wife's colleague works in the same building and place as your wife. And this is right under your wife's nose. It's disrespectful. And now your wife's hurt and feels undervalued and unpretty, like she said, and uh, she doesn't trust you, and rightfully so. So this was not harmless entertainment, as you call it, and now your wife is blaming herself, which a lot of women do when their men do things like this, and it's not the wives, it's just that their husbands, you know, get stupid. I mean, you created a problem in your marriage where there was none. So now it's your job, you ask how you can fix this, now it's your job to do everything you can to reassure your wife that she did nothing wrong. You can, you have to ask her how you can possibly make this up to her and, and, and do what she says. And you're going to have to be patient with your wife as you guys work through this. Uh, and in the meantime, you got to stay off Instagram, stay out of the courtyard with the fellas, checking out the women and stop making eye contact with this woman. Leave her alone. Focus on your wife and your marriage and just stop doing stupid stuff. Cause this was stupid, Steve. A real man. <laughs> Shirley said it best. You finna lose your wife over some damn feet. And you stupid. <laughs> Ain't no fool like an old fool. Mm. And you just an old fool. Let me tell you how stupid you are. I'm a 55-year-old man, man. My wife and I work in the same damn building. <laughs> I'd have been quit that job long time ago. <laughs> really? Transfer me out. Put me across town something. And your wife always got to dress up and be jazzy because she interacts to the public. You able to dress down for work. Her office, this is how I know you old. Her office full of dime pieces. Yeah. <laughs> Who the hell say that? <laughs> it's been a I minute. Do, and, we are, and we are old dude that think he a player, too, see? That's your real problem. Full of dying pieces in their early 30s and everything on these women is right where it need to be, if you know what I mean. No, we don't. <laughs> what? Since when? Did they start moving people's ass around on their stomach? <laughs> what? The last time you seen a woman with some breasts on her kneecaps. What do that mean? <laughs> And everything on these women is right where it need to be. Where? What? What? <laughs> you don't even know how to describe being a player with your old ignorant ass. <laughs> if you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. What the hell you mean? Stupid ass statement. Me and my coworkers love to sit in the courtyard. Oh, ain't nobody going to see that. Oh, God. You and your coworkers sitting in the courtyard <laughs> watching women come and go. I started mm -hmm. following one of the ladies on IG because she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And on top of that, she smiles and makes eye contact with me whenever I see her. No, she don't. Mm -hmm. No, she don't. That's your damn imagination. She don't make eye contact and smile at you. <laughs> For all you know, she cockeyed. She smiling at the man next to you. Hold on, Steve. Hold on. Nobody we'll have part two. at your old ass dying pieces. We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, my wife's co-worker's feet. <laughs> we'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's crazy strawberry letter and uh, finish up with your response. Uh, the subject is my wife's co-worker's feet. What? This old fool over here wrote this letter talking about he's 55, he married. He work in the same building, his wife, he dressed down because his job ain't, he don't require him to dress up. His wife got to be jazz and everything. And all her, and her wife work around a bunch of 30-year-olds in the office and they dying pieces. Mm. Yeah, that's how he described it. <laughs> yeah, he's so old, they dying pieces. And everything... And and everything on these women is right where it need to be, if you know what I mean. Oh, that's your favorite line. Oh, hey, old ass player. No, I didn't really know what you meant by that. But if you're referring to their breasts is up there by their chest and their butt is right behind their pelvic, ain't that where it's supposed to be? That's where it's supposed to be. Yes. <laughs>
Yeah. Oh, when the last time you saw a woman, unless she was old with her breast down at her knee? When the oh, last God. time you seen that? Ain't no breasts like where they supposed to be. Ain't no breasts. So like let's save all these ignorant ass statements. <laughs> Me and my coworkers love to sit in the courtyard watching the women come and go. Didn't you just say that you and your wife work in the same building? He said it. You don't think word and got around the building that all the men sit in the courtyard watching people? I started following one of these ladies on IG because she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And on top of that, she smiles and make eye contact with me whenever I see her. No, she don't. It's your imagination, dog. How the baddest chick in the building wants you? How, dog? How, dog? No, 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 right. no huh? She the finest woman you done ever seen, and she wants you. Boy, mm, mm, stop. Mm. What I love most about her is her pretty feet. They're the mm. sexier part of her, and they have their own Instagram page. I secretly looked at her it's IG foot page for months until my wife saw me and took my phone. She kept my phone for two days. I was a nervous wreck. When I got it back, I made a fake IG page so I could see pictures of my wife co-workers' pretty feet without my wife knowing it. Now, right mm. there, you're thinking, my man, great move, mm -hmm. right away. I thought I had outsmarted her this time. You stupid <laughs> ass. You ain't done nothing smart in this whole damn letter. Uh -uh, now, you done all. made a fake IG page, and you said, I thought I had outsmarted her this time. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Didn't she bust you on the phone? Yes, she ain't did. Ain't you the same one that think this girl is looking at you every time you out? Ain't you the same one that's still calling women dime pieces? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't you the same one that work in the same office as your wife, but you sit in the courtyard with your friends looking at women? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This you, right? <laughs> yes. I thought I had outsmarted her this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she mm -hmm. caught me again. That, that Well, that ain't take long. <laughs> 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 they ain't she long. went into my settings and found mm -hmm. the fake IG account attached to my real account, and I was busted again. Cause you stupid. <laughs> you ain't outsmart nobody. You stupid. I thought, and I and I, I, I and she saw all the emojis and comment right there. What you fifty five emojis? <laughs> emojis. Yep. Why are you fifty five with the emojis? Hearts. What is what what what, what which doing? one? What is you put next to the feet? Yeah, which ones? The heart. I still want to know. The kisses. And have you figured which... out how to make your hands black yet? Because you probably ain't. <laughs> you need what? to learn how to make your emojis have dark skin on it. It's so stupid <laughs> ass. You still sitting out white prayer hands. I hate when black people praying for me and seeing white hands. I know. Going, hey, 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 hey. Hey, act like you praying for me. <laughs> Change your skin tone. Stop yes. asking the Pope to pray for me. <laughs> 55 with your stupid ass with them white hands on everything. Clapping and stuff. I got a partner be sending me stuff. I just delete his text every time he send me something. <laughs> Only you would point that again. out, Steve. Oh, yeah, you know why you got busted again? Because you 55 is too old to think that you can do anything tech savvy. Mm -hmm. You think you're the first person to create a fake page? <laughs> stupid ass. You now listen to this stupid. here. She saw the emojis and the comments that I left under the co-workers' pictures and she started crying. Mm -hmm. She didn't react how I, how I thought she would at all. She told me my actions made her feel unpretty and unwanted. That broke my heart and I cried too. Uh, you can stop all that, because I can tell you right now, you can't outcry a woman. So you can stop all this crying too, trying to, because that's stupid. You can't outcry her. You don't cry with me. We had, a, we had dudes tell people that. You don't do that right here. And then let me tell you something. Here was the, see, I saw it as harmless entertainment, but now she's so hurt yeah. and broken because of me. How do I restore my wife's confidence in herself? You probably can't, because your you wife's feet probably ain't that fly. That's the problem. See, one of the whole say. problems you got in this letter is your wife's feet. She know her feet ain't finna be like that. And now she found out that's what you really like, and now she uh. ain't got it. She's distraught. <laughs>
We got to go. All right, listen. Hit us up on Instagram at steveharveyfm.com to comment. You on have to buy your wife some athletic socks. You can also check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up next, it's uh, Junior. <laughs> And we'll see what he wants to talk about today right yeah. after this. Yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time for Junior, and you have some questions for Steve Junior? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I do. Uh, you know, uh, More questions. Uh, you know, I'm about, about a week into this thing. Hey, I'm before about... you do it, I want to share with you, Tommy, I wrote a Junior poem for his marriage. You want to hear what? It? Yeah, let me hear the poem. Here it is. Eyes married now. The end. <laughs> wow. Oh my so God. Stupid. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, yeah. My dog. Yeah. He just did. You know, Unc Man, you know, I I I just keep thinking, Unc. I just wanna I just wanna be to a great start, Unc. I'm like, what's what's some advice you can give me about being a husband now? Cause I'm not single no more and my thought process got to change. I can't have the same thought no more. And what kind of pro- what kind of thought process you got right now? Well, you know, Tommy, I, I keep I keep saying stuff like I'm just me. Yeah, yeah and, and it's not. What, Junior? How old? You gotta are change you? your pronoun. Mm-hmm. How old are yeah. you? <laughs> forty four. See, you've been doing this for forty four. It's just in you. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> but Carla said it best. Your pronoun is no longer I. It's mm-hmm. we. Your pronoun is never me, it's her. <laughs> Your thought can't be what you want. It got to be what do she want. But then you got to act like it's what we want. Even mm-hmm. though it's only what she want. Because what she want might not be the same thing as what he want. Who's Ooh. on first base, what's on second? What? You got to try up in here. <laughs> Are you what? taking notes, Junior? I, I'm trying to get You see how confused that sounds? <laughs> yeah. I That's do. what you in now, son. Mm-hmm. I'm in confusion. <laughs> it's a bad yeah, so you can on. sing that. <laughs> oh, that's ball of confusion. It has nothing yeah. to do with this uh, question you had me, but... That's, yeah. that's what I'm in. What else you want to know? Want to yeah. Thing okay. Uh, so I got to think of something nice to do every single day for her. No. Like every day. I what? Got to no, listen to me. Something. Bishop Jake told me something in marriage counseling that ended my marriage. Uh, he said, it's not your job to make another person happy, nor should you make that your job. You can't make another person happy. I don't care how hard you try. That's a, that's a job that cannot be happy. Ooh. Oh, all right, uh, Junior. Hope Is that helps. Is you, Junior? No, yeah. no. It's just a lot to remember, and I'll be forgetting the yeah. first step. Oh, don't worry about it. You're going to forget it a whole lot of times. All right, listen. Coming up at the top of the hour, Junior, this wasn't you, okay? Yeah. This was not you. But wait until you hear what happened to another groom on his wedding day. Oh. Right oh, after sure. Too oh. soon. I uh, know. <laughs> uh-uh. Sorry. Get to it. <laughs> yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Junior, this has nothing to do with you, okay? So you can relax on this one. But it is a wedding story about a groom, though. Uh, Carlos says too soon. Carlos says too soon. soon. All right, here we go. We're going to try it. We'll try it. A groom recently tried a poorly planned and poorly executed stunt on his wedding day. He tried to enter his wedding ceremony on a dirt bike and he skidded and was thrown off the bike. His bride-to-be was horrified as he was rushed to the hospital. He broke his collarbone and he needed five stitches in his Ignite. head. Hey, man, he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. Is that My man, that's, that's the, he didn't want to do it. Yeah. My man, that's yeah. the greatest out I've ever seen. Yeah. We're going to have to do this later. Hold up, hold up. Let me give it to him. Standing ovation. Bravo, <laughs> dog. Yeah. I'm going to break my collarbone. Bravo. The, I, you know, I've thought about that many times in my life. I just never had the courage to do it. I remember I stayed out all right night long when I was about 28 years old. And uh-huh. About yeah. 26 years old, I stayed out all night long, didn't make it back home. I was seriously <laughs> contemplating wrapping my car around the telephone pole. Oh my God. Wow. And 
just go on and check into the hospital. Because I didn't <laughs> have that lie together in my mind. <laughs> so man, my man, congratulations. Big up. Man. <laughs> yeah, Woo. we just going to have to do this later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me come in hot. Skid. Yeah. Pull myself. <laughs> I'm going to the hospital. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Tore up everything. <laughs> Five stitches in his head. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was yeah. worth he got, it. Hell yeah. But he, he got two more it. years, sir. He got, he good for two more years. <laughs> yeah. Two more years of time. What do you mean? Being single, he can be single yep. for two more years? Oh, yep. man. Lord. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's it. Beautiful That's man. Cold feet. He I'd have heard it all, bike. man. Oh, Come man. in on the dirt bike. He told his boy too. <laughs> Ain't nobody else get hurt. No. <laughs> See that? He told yeah. his boy, I'm going to come down the aisle. I'm going to come in hot. Y'all move over. I don't want to hit hot. hard, but I'm going to come dead at y'all. Oh, y'all man. move out the way. Oh, I'm going to hit them brakes and, and listen to lie. I'm going to be in the crazy. air. <laughs> He Man. broke his collarbone, guys. Now, on that there. tree, that was the one she wanted to get married in front of. <laughs> yeah. Mike just laying there. <laughs> 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 oh, one more time, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All you hear is Holly. Guess running and everything. I love it. And his buddy, his buddy had a, had a bottle with fake blood in it. He ain't even had to use it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this was no, playing to the teeth. Yeah. All right, boys knew. Yeah. Oh, man. Hey, man, oh, you know, man. Oh, man. You know, when you hit the brakes, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's going to put me in the air, though. <laughs> hey, don't listen to them. How hard was his grooms been laughing? Uh, they was, I swear to God, they was hollering. Let me tell you something, man. Inside. That afternoon... Yeah. No, they was laughing the night before when at the bachelor party when they were playing it. But yeah. after it happened though, yeah. and they found out he had cracked his he collarbone right. and busted his head. Yeah. Dog, they couldn't breathe. Mm, they had to make sure he was all right though. Oh, and they were trying go. to cut that right bike after off that, that bike. Right after that. Yeah. Dude, yeah. dude, yeah. that bike. Give me that bike, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah they were trying to cut that bike. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll tell you who was messed up the bride's mama. Yes. Oh, oh. I know she That the bride's oh, daddy? Yeah. Uh, what did he he do? knew what was up. Yeah. Uh, oh, he did? Yeah, that's one way yeah. to get out of it. Yeah. Oh, man. He didn't that's like great room anyway. <laughs> I hate all of you. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Lenny! <laughs> what is <you> Lenny? <laughs> uh, uh, in That's so wrong. Coming That's in. So wrong. Coming yeah. in hot. Man. Uh, all right. Uh, Lenny, coming up in 20 minutes you. after the hour. Carl is up with music news for today. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, Carla, our girl with some music news. What you got, Carla? What's going on? Well, the iHeart Music Festival was oh, over yeah. the weekend. It was epic. It all went down at the T-Mobile Arena in Vegas. Avril Lavigne, Black Eyed Peas, Lionel Richie. Oh, my goodness. You know black people, Lionel Richie, mm-hmm. the <laughs> legend himself. Yes, mm-hmm. LL Cool J, Megan Thee Stallion, uh, rock and roll legend, Pat Benatar, Sam wow, Smith, wow. Diddy, Diddy. It was two nights, Friday and Saturday night. Uh, again, shout out to the legend, Steve. We love us some Lionel Richie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he went back to the 80s. He performed a lot of songs, you know, from his solo days, dancing on the ceiling. Hello, all Hello. night long. Love yes. will find, find a way. way. Yes, yep. sir. That's it. That's the jam, jam, jam. He also sang Brick House Commodores. Got the crowd. Okay. On okay. their feet. Boom, boom, yep. Boom, 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 boom. Yes. Lionel Richie is looking good, looking good. So if you missed it, if you missed the iHeart Music Festival, don't you mm-hmm. worry. You can check it out October 7th and 8th on the CW, two night special, 8 p.m. Eastern. So that's October 7th and 8th if you missed the iHeart Music Festival. And there it is. It was nice. Okay. Vegas was on fire this past All weekend. Right. Mm hmm. All right, thank you, Carla. Well, Tommy's back to play Would You Rather with us, so we'll do that 
Uh-oh. at 33 minutes after the hour. Yeah. This is new because I did it for a whole week by myself. <laughs> yes, you did. Oh, come on. Yes, it was epic. Would you rather at 33 minutes after, right after this? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, the nephew is back. It is time for Would You Rather, like Steve said all last week. Uh, Tommy, he did it by himself. It was epic. Before Mm. that, it was just Junior and Steve. (laughs) But now you're back. Here we go. Would you rather... Wait a minute. Would you rather have extra big eyes or would you rather have an extra long tongue? (laughs) I'm going to take that tongue. Yeah. Take that, take that tongue. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. You, don't, that, you, don't, you don't get nothing for having big ass eyes. Nothing. No. Whatever, man. <laughs> I beg yeah, you to differ. Can, yeah, 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 you can get some things done with that extra tongue. Uh, Shirley, you seeing extra stuff you don't even need to see. That ain't, that's not even necessary. It's over Tommy, Tommy. It's not about big, me. Tommy, she got big eyes. She don't see nothing extra. It's just closer. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. This has nothing to do with me. <laughs> All right. Closer. Um. Would you rather you wear your wife's worn undies or would you rather she wears your worn undies? Which one? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not I'm not finna get in Jackie's no. drawers like well not like that. No, no. So no. Mm. I'm not mm. doing no Oscar <laughs> Delo. That was interesting. In yeah, that was interesting last I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> not like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I, um, I can't Mary wear Marjorie panties. We're this will be an on. argument after this yeah. would you I'm going to tell you right now, if I if I put her drawers on, all it's going to be is a garter strap. Okay, that's we're, just we're moving on. Shame. We're moving on. <laughs> would you rather... You get the visual? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Would you rather laugh at everything your wife says, laugh at everything she says, or would you rather frown when she talks? Those are your choices. Oh, I got that. Hey. Yes. Oh, I, mm-hmm. I've learned to yeah. laugh. Come on, newlywed. What uh-huh. is it? Uh-huh. 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 Hey, it's all A. Okay. Yeah. Okay, All you're learning. Day, every yeah. day. You're learning. Hey. Yeah. Uh-huh. Good morning. Ha! <laughs> 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 what? It's overacting. <laughs> oh, no. Good <laughs> Yeah. Team. <laughs> well, I would choose frowning first. Uh-huh. Really? Oh, okay. Then go fun. from there. Because if you laugh, mm-hmm. see, uh-huh. a lot of these subjects ain't funny. Uh-huh. Mm. What's uh-huh. so funny? Because that's the next yeah. statement. Yeah. Uh-huh. uh-huh. What you yeah. laughing at? Mm-hmm. What's so funny? Mm-hmm. What? I fell uh-huh. in the tub last night. Mm. Oh. What's that, uh-huh. man? <laughs> the baby called and she in trouble at school. What's uh-huh. That, mm-hmm. okay. Nope. Yeah. All right. Listen, thank you. That's today's round of Would You Rather with the nephew back. Uh, Wrong again, Junior. Wrong again. (laughs) We thought you were right, though. I thought I was right. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I know you did. I know you did. (laughs) Coming up at 49 minutes after the hour, our last break of the day, and some closing remarks from the one and only Steve No, we have a very special closing remark. We're going to do a reenactment. (laughs) Oh. Oh, okay. We'll find out what that's about right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, guys. Last break of the day. Uh, earlier, we did the story about a groom. It wasn't about you, Junior, but this was this, this did really happen. A groom recently tried a poorly planned and poorly executed, executed stunt on his wedding day. He tried to enter his wedding ceremony on a dirt bike, and uh, he skidded and was thrown off the bike. His bride-to-be, uh, mm-hmm. of course, was horrified, and he was rushed to the hospital. <laughs> now, he broke his collarbone. He needed five stitches yeah. to his head. Five stitches in his head. Yeah. Tommy? What, why would, what would make somebody do something like this? I don't, I don't get this. Ooh. Ladies A and gentlemen, bike? we are here at the church, and our boy is down at the edge of the street getting ready to roll right in here and be ready to be married. And ladies and gentlemen, here he comes. We're gonna, I think we can hear that motorbike right now. I think we can hear him gearing up. Yeah. There oh, he is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here I go. Room. Hey, let me tell you something. I told her I didn't want to do it. I tried to find a way to get out of this. Mm-hmm. And I just don't want to do it. I'm not yeah. ready for marriage. Yeah, man. But I think I found the perfect way yeah. to not cancel mm-hmm. and not be a no-show. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ride up these steps. Mm-hmm. What? Full speed. Mm-hmm. Come down the aisle. Come on, man. 
My two buddies are in on it. Yeah. Like, Come on, yeah. Connor. Come on. You're not Connor. Connor. I'm not Connor. using any brakes. Don't do it. I'm Shut gonna up. slam into that altar. Shut up, mm. Connor. <laughs> and I'm just gonna deal with it. You deal with it. You deal with it. Listen Let's start this girls, motor. Baby. Let's get up out of here. Let's take off the steps. Let's go. Let's go, babe. Get married. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. My God. How are you? How are you feeling? <laughs> How are you? Can, can you talk? What is that noise? <laughs> the bike <I'm>, girl. <laughs> what? Connor. Connor. Am I okay? Yeah, you get well you your your head's busted wide open. We can see the white meat. I mean you're, you're, <laughs> Broke your collarbone. Collarbone. No pun intended. I, I know. I now your be. collarbone is sticking straight through your tuxedo. You oh, see that? Great. That's great. That's great. That's just what I wanted. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I mean, we talked about it. We talked uh, about it. We discussed it. Is this what you wanted? I didn't want to stick that far out, but yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to be injured. I didn't know what was going to pop out. Like, oh my God, it's sticking straight out. Yeah, it's You're sticking straight dead. through that's your bow tie. Crazy. Hey, yeah. That's, hey, hey, hey. Tommy. Tell yeah. Me. Did I cut my head? Ah, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty bad. There's, there's blood running down to your ear. You're gonna, you you're definitely gonna need stitches. Tommy, what is she doing? Ah, uh, well, right now she's, 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 she's crying. She's falling out, and uh, she's, she's completely. She's fainted. She's fainted. Yeah. Great. Yeah, okay. She's a, but okay. her dad is there. Okay, and, good. Uh, she's fainted, and I'm incapacitated. Ah. Uh, it's gonna be no wedding today, pal. No, there's no I wedding. We there's did definitely it. not a wedding. Oh, I think we did it. Yeah. Hey, did somebody call an ambulance? Call an there's there's an ambulance on the way, but now your mom's your mom wants to talk to you. I don't want to talk to her. You, talk to her. You, better, you better knock yourself out. What do you want to talk? What, what she want to talk about? I mean, she just wants to make sure she's all. You all right? I all right go I'm, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go get her. Go ahead. Yeah. Honey, are, are you okay? Hey, mom. Yeah. You, I'm fine. Don't, don't move. Don't move. Don't try to move. I just got to get out of here, Mom. What? What are you talking about? I got to get out of here. Look at the my collarbone. What do you coming. mean, what am I talking about? The ambulance is coming. Okay, great. Hey, Mom, just, just leave and go. Just go get Dad. I want to talk oh, to God. Dad. Oh, God. My mom, it's oh, okay. Oh, God. Let's oh, talk well, to huh? Dad. Oh. Where's my dad? Honey, go get your son. Dad. Yeah. Who's going to be the dad? <laughs> you the dad? You the one, dad too, Steve? Oh, uh, one of the men. That's what I'm uh, thinking. Uh, Tommy, he got I, the voice. I ain't got but one damn voice, so I ain't uh, sorry. Junior, okay. that's on you. You the bright dad. groomsman. Son. Son. What? I said my daddy. Who went and got my baby? <laughs> too high, Junior. Too high. Go lower. <laughs> Son, the hell? Go lower, what? Junior. Son, why is my little brother in here? Son, that's as low as he can go. Son, go with it. That's that son. low as it gets. Yeah. Son, what were you thinking? What was that? I'll be down. You were well, airborne. Well, Dad. <laughs> why your voice change, Connor? I gotta sound like I belong to him. <laughs> hey, Dad. Connor. Yeah. Listen. I know you raised me to do the right thing, but I just couldn't do it. I had to get out of it, Dad. I had to get out of here. Son, I couldn't I'm do it. You did great as far as I'm concerned. You were awesome. He's going to die. Thank you. Be quiet, Mama of the group. Tell me what. <laughs> the bride wants to know if you would, you'd like to carry it on and, and get the service done at the hospital. Uh, probably not going to be able to do this for a couple of years, man. It looks like his collarbone sticking out pretty die. far. And I think on the way to the hospital, I think I'm going to lose my memory. We're not calling off this wedding. That's what we're not doing. I'm going to lose my memory. I'm not going to know who the hell any of you are. <laughs> Plan B. You're going to die. Hey, y'all, y'all have a great day. Talk to God. I'm sure he'd love to hear from you. Y'all stay oh, in man. peace, man. Tommy back.